Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a hidden menu for your Galaxy Watch 5 or Watch 5 Pro. We're going to be looking at a developer options menu. Many of you have probably already heard of this, but I'm sure a few of you haven't, so I figured I'd share this info with you. Um, this is also available on last year's model, the Galaxy Watch 4, and it's also available on legacy devices that feature the Tizen OS, such as the Active 2. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and take a look at this menu to see what you can do with it. So what you're going to want to do is swipe down, go into settings, and you're going to scroll all the way down until you get to about watch. Hopefully this is in camera view. All right, once we're in here, we're going to scroll down just a little bit until we get to software info. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here in the middle, you see software version. You want to go ahead and tap on that like seven or eight times. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Do, 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 do. Gives you a little message that developer options have been enabled. Uh, before we proceed, I would like to let you know too that you can go ahead and turn this back off if you don't want to keep that menu item available by just tapping on this software version again like seven or eight more times. So let's go ahead and take a look at this menu item. So we're going to go back two screens. All right, there's our about watch and underneath it you see we have this new option, sorry my hand's kind of sideways there, called developer options. So let's go ahead and click on that real quick. So right off the bat, we have some interesting options. Let me put my hand down here. It's a little hard to rest. I'll just zoom in later during editing. So we have um, stay awake while charging, the first option. That kind of speaks for itself. So if you turn that on, your watch screen will stay active while you have it on the charger. I guess that's kind of cool if you want to like keep telling time while you have it on the charger. Otherwise, the default is just to leave that off. Uh, the next one we have is Bluetooth snoop logging. So this is a way for developers to have verbose logging for Bluetooth activities to help troubleshoot the device. This next option is pretty cool. I like this. This is vibrate on connectivity change. So if you happen to lose your Bluetooth connection to your phone, or if you're on the LTE model and you lose cell coverage and it reverts back to Bluetooth, whatever it may be, you'll get a little haptic feedback on your watch letting you know that you had a connection change. That's actually pretty handy. I like that a lot. The next up is ADB debugging. Similar to what we have available in the developer options of our phones, this allows you to connect to the ADB tools on your PC to do elevated commands and to use a super user account. We have wireless debugging, um, another debugging tool for developers. A lot of these are developer tools, but we're going to get to some cool ones here in just a moment. This next option is if you enable debugging privileges for a particular user, you can go in here and revoke those privileges. And we can go in here and view the developer options. And this has something that I'm just not even familiar with, but I figured I'd show it anyway. And if, as we scroll a little bit down, we can select a mock location. This is for fine tuning applications that use GPS and you wanna test the location services if you're a developer. And we also have the logger buffer size. Um, this will basically allow you to pick different sizes for the files that it's going to store on your device for when it's logging, debugging information. Let's go back a screen. So we can enable or disable debug layouts. I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. Um, this is very handy for developers that are setting up UI elements on the watch. This next option is pretty cool. This is Force RTL Layout. RTL stands for right to left. So if we enable this option, let's do that real quick. Let me get in the center of the screen a little bit better. We'll go ahead and turn that on. Notice everything is now right aligned, kind of like in a Microsoft Word document. You know how you switch from left, uh, left alignment to right alignment in a Word doc? This does the same exact thing. Let's go ahead and turn that back. Debug overdraw, put some, it basically highlights any of the animated part of any animated um, element on the user interface. This is great for developers to make sure their animations are staying within bounds of what they're intending. The next one, debug GPU profiling. This is kind of cool to see. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. And this is showing in real time our GPU performance. And you'll notice here that the screen is kind of staying still. And as if I move my screen up and down, you're gonna see that the waveform here, if you wanna call it that, is going up and down. And that's representing the GPU utilization that we currently are using. All right, so now we're to the next three options that are gonna help speed your watch up. We have the different window animation options. There's a few of them here, three in a row. So the default animation is 1x speed, all right, regular. So if we click on this, we have quite a few options. We can extend this all the way out to 10x, which is gonna make the animation super slow. So when you go from one screen to the next, it's gonna pop in real slow, then the screen will die out, and it'll go to the next 
widget or whatever. And by default, this is set to 1x, but if you wanna speed things up, we can turn animations off. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let me go to the next one and do the same thing. These are all the different Windows animation settings. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, so they're all off. Let me show you this in action. Let me show you how fast this is. We'll go to the home screen here. Once they're loaded, that's the thing, is if you haven't used it in a while, it takes a little bit for these widgets to kind of load into memory. Once you do, look how fast that is. There is no animation speed whatsoever. That includes your going to your app drawer and all that, like this. Look at that. Instant. Go back. Boom. Instant way to speed up your Watch 5. Um, and this, uh, it does make a difference. I like it. Preferably for me, I like it at 0.5x. So you just have a little bit of animation, but at the same time, you're getting it to be a little bit faster than the default. Let's go back and take a look at the rest of the settings. So this next one is pointer location. If you're connected to a device, it'll show the pointer trail here on your screen. We also have show tap. So if we turn that on and we start tapping on stuff, you'll see the little tap. Hopefully that's coming through. Bug report menu will add a new icon to your app drawer, which will let you generate a bug report. Turn on Wi-Fi automatically during charging. By default, this is enabled. Um, I don't know why you would want to turn this off. I mean, I like to keep my Wi-Fi on at all times, but if you want this option to turn it off, maybe to help speed up the charging, or if you don't want to get interrupted with anything or just don't need it, you can go ahead and enable that, and it will keep Wi-Fi off while it's connected to the charger. The next option is for enabling verbose logging for Wi-Fi activities, similar to the Bluetooth one that we had earlier. We also have the ability to turn off the automatic Wi-Fi. So by default, with the Watch 5 and any of the previous watches, once you've established a Wi-Fi connection, it's going to always try to automatically reconnect to it. So if you go to your home network, it's going to automatically reconnect. You have the ability to turn off that auto connection. I guess this is useful for if you're using your device for like testing purposes, maybe you have multiple watches and you don't always want to have this one connected, you now have a way to manually override that auto connection. And the next option is mobile battery saver. This is also on by default. And what this does is this limits the power draw that's used from like your wearable app and any other apps like say you're running Spotify from your phone and you're controlling it on your watch. It helps minimize the power draw from the watch instantiating that service. So that can be, I mean, by default it's on. You want to leave it on. Um, and I guess if you have any type of issues with certain apps staying connected or maybe you're missing some notifications, you might want to turn that off. So the next one is battery optimization. If you click on here, it shows all these different um, Samsung apps, but they all say not available. So I'm not really sure what any of these do. And if you click on it, they don't do anything. Um, maybe they're intending on doing something with this in the future, but for the time being, it's just a list of applications. All right, the next one is called app notifications. So this is pretty cool. This is a control mechanism. If we go into this for controlling which applications you wanna block and which applications you want to allow in regards to notifications being sent to your watch. And our last option is one more verbose debug logging option. Uh, this is just to help troubleshoot your watch. All right, guys, so this is the developer options menu that's available on your Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro, also previous versions of the Samsung Galaxy watches. And uh, the Windows animation scaling, that's where it's at with this. Um, I definitely recommend putting it down to 0.5x if you wanna get a little bit faster, snap your speed out of your watch, but still have a little bit of animations to look at. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them down in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.